You know, it's rare to get a game that feels complete and, you know, actually fun. And Metro 2033 is an especially great example of this. Post-apocalyptic Russia, where the inhabitants ran into the underground metro to seek refuge and build settlements in the tunnel. Metro 2033 was originally a book that was released in 2002, and from what I've heard, it's pretty identical to the game. Now, I am playing the Redux version on console, and overall it runs great. The original version of the game was released in 2010, which is pretty crazy because it still feels fresh and new. The game even takes a line from the book at the beginning of every chapter, which is really nice to hear. As we're waiting there, my long journey was nearly at the end. But would I have the courage, the will, to see it through? Oh yeah, apparently everyone has the Metro book too, except me. Let's train to our friend Artyom, who goes right through monsters and anomalies alike. We play as a character named Artyom. He has your cliche story about wanting to explore the world and the Metro, and collect postcards. If you were born after 1990, ask your parents about what these are. Basically, tweets that went through the post office and took days to arrive. Now, the translation of Artyom is unharmed or pure health, and I think the reason they did this is because people through the Metro series constantly note that Artyom seems to survive a lot of weird things, including anomalies. Now, these anomalies aren't enemies per se, they are just ghosts, balls of electricity, and the big threat, dark ones. Of course, they are just out doing ghost things, ball of electricity things, and dark things doing dark things stuff. But do not get in their way because they'll fuck you up with a. Right, left, you toothless, and then you say, God damn, they ruthless. Now, this is a straightforward hero's journey, and often it is difficult to show growth in the character who never speaks. And they did this through Artyom's hands. Now, at the beginning of your journey, your hands are clean, smooth, and innocent. But by the end of your journey, they are rough, hardened, and mature. It's stuff like this I love because our team never speaks, and they had to be creative with how they show his growth. To even further support this, our team looks up to a ranger named Hunter, and his introduction is amazing. Full armor, battle-worn, ammo-ready. This is what I believe our team will become in the end. And as a side note, I love a Hunter backstory or a prequel, because he's never mentioned in the series really again. If we are to survive, this threat must be eliminated, no matter the cost. Eliminated. Understand? One thing that really surprised me when I was downloading the game was that it is only about 7 gigs, which is small for how big the game feels. The way they did this is by throwing a bunch of furniture, items, crawl spaces into small rooms. Instead of being able to walk straight across the room, you have to evade enemies or find a way to get behind enemy lines. So, you need to get to Polis, which requires you to get through each station one at a time. But of course, there's hiccups along the way. Because if there wasn't, there would be no fucking game. My personal favorite hiccup is the idea of in the Reds and the Nazis. There's this part where you sneak under both of their front lines and sneak through the Nazi area. This is not emphasized in this game, but the sequel's for another video. To think that they actually did this kind of tunneling as far back in World War I in the US Civil War makes it all the more exciting. But maybe it's better to be underground anyways. It's been 20 years since the nukes hit and the surface shows for it. Mutated creatures, high winds, radiation. While you don't travel on the surface very much, the moments are very memorable. But what really is not memorable though is Polis, the big final destination. When Polis is talked about before you get there, it's made to sound like the heaven of the metro. But you're really there for five minutes tops, and overall a very disappointing buildup. Oh, but what really defines this world is the currency. And that currency is ammunition. Now, this is something I love, I've never really seen it done before. I mean, at least they aren't bottle caps. They are actually useful as you can use them currency to buy meds, filters, and weapons, but you can still use them as ammo. And hell do they pack a punch. And for some reason they're all incendiary. I don't remember my M4 shooting incendiary, that would be fucking dope though. 
Pro tip, when you get to the Ranger Outpost near the end, there are no more shops. So for me, I had a thousand high damage rounds to obliterate the last section of the game. Now, while I've played through the game twice for this video in the past two days, Jesus Christ, I find that in both playthroughs, I still end up with a thousand military rounds, which is a lot. This is something that's fixed in the sequel. It's got poor accuracy and overheats like hell. That's why they call it a bester gun. <laughs> now, the weapons in the Metro are very interesting. You have an array of weapons starting with the revolver all the way to a belt-fed shotgun. My personal favorite design is the shotgun made out of bicycle parts. There was even a weapon that used pressurized tanks to fire steel balls at enemies. You can customize these weapons with lasers, sides, and some unique weapon upgrades. Did it. Now you have your weapons, you have your ammo, you have your meds. You might want to grab a couple more filters while you're at it. What are we fighting today? Oh boy, we have mutants. There is only one mutant I want to talk about, and it's these fucking rats. There's a part where you go into a station that recently got attacked, and it's awful. There's these holes in the ground that are connected by small tunnels. These rats come out and hit and run your character. Three hits will most likely kill you. These things are fast and plentiful. Oh yeah, and you can fall down the hole where a rat will then bite your neck off. Sweet. Fuck! But, somebody thought, hey, you know how we should end this section? Let's make R2 and pick up a kid that fucks with the guy's aim. Yes. And we're gonna throw a couple more rats in there too, why not? Now, humans are actually a pretty rare fight, as most of the time you'll be sneaking past them. But man oh man, they will drop you quick and will even try to flank you. And I think the fights are very enjoyable, not like these goddamn rats- Fuck! Now, the anomalies are rare as well, and while they don't go out of their way to attack you, it's more of a fuck around and find out kind of situation. They either fry your ass, or make you accidentally kill yourself. Now, something that sets this game apart from others in this genre is the use of moral-based decision-making that affects the outcome of the game. During your journey, your screen will light up like a flashbang. This starts out small events such as playing instruments, exploring, donating bullets, but slowly develops into something more. Remember that kid we talked about earlier, when you get past all the goddamn rats and get to the mother? She will offer you bullets, and you can take them, and I won't lie, it's very tempting, but you can also refuse it. Be selfless, respect the dead, but more importantly, don't be a dick! These events are all hidden around the game, so embrace the Metro. In my first playthrough, I thought I was doing morally good, and I still ended with the normal ending, which baffled me. So just for this video, I explored the metro another time, and the amount of things I missed in my first playthrough really surprised me, and I bet if I played it through again, I would even find more things. This reminds me a lot of Bioshock 2 with the harvesting little sisters or saving, or giving mercy or killing. What's great is that this is a theme kept through the entire metro series. Now. I usually would say that all the difficulty levels are good, but I think there is one combo difficulty that is perfect for first timers. Now there's Ranger and Spartan. Only play Ranger. Spartan makes the game more Call of Duty like, but Spartan actually adds survival into it, like finding your next filter or gas mask. Then I played on Hardcore, and I would even argue to even maybe up the difficulty than what I did, because it makes it so the enemies take more damage, but you also take more damage. Feels more immersed as well. Here is the heavy spoiler part, so skip to the very end if you want to really live this world. And I mean this is a world to live. As I've said, there are two endings. If you play through the game and not exploring or helping, you go through with the missiles and kill all the dark ones. However, if you embrace the metro and weren't a total dick to everybody, you get the secret ending. You are given an opportunity to shoot the laser designator and save the dark ones. This ending is very satisfying to get, but the issue is which one is real. 
subscribe and watch my next video to find out. Overall, Metro is a good series, and particularly the first one I think a lot of people are going to go to, just due to the fact of the gameplay. And the reason I'm making a video on this is because the entire series is for sale for like 12 bucks, including the DLC. So if you ever want to get into the series, go for it.